In this world, Curly has the force of gravity applied to her in this flutter flame game system. We've also added ground to her world that has collision detection that allows us to stop her movement against the force of gravity. However, in our world, made with the tiled map editor, we have no way for Lena to move in a horizontal motion. She has a magic skateboard that can go over grass. So let's get her started moving over grass. We need some type of tap detection system to control the movement, whether it's left or right. We could use a virtual joystick, but it's often easier just to see what's going on if you just tap the left and right hand side of the screen. So we added the tap detector to the flame game system. And with the tap detector built into flame game with the mix in, we now have access to on tap down. On tap down, we'll have a piece of info about where you tapped on the screen. So when you're playing on your, your mobile phone, right? So your, your thumbs are probably on the left and right hand sides of the screen left or right, so we're gonna check to see first that we can detect this tap. So initially, we're hoping to get any type of um, tap on any place in the screen. I'm just gonna delete that hit ground since it was going hundreds of times. And let's tap it. Yeah, it seems to be working. So we can at least get the tap. So if we can parse out the information from the info and see where it leads us, we can probably get the ac actual position of where it's being tapped. If it's on the left hand side of the screen, so the left of the screen, the, your phone screen, is going to be zero. And the right, we can pull it out with size one, uh, size x, size zero, which would be the x coordinate of the game. So let's pull out the event position from and the game dot x. This is in the documentation. And if it's less than, let's say 100, the left side of the screen, the left, the far left is zero, we're gonna have it print out left. So we're just testing to see that we can actually tap on the left hand, left and right hand side of the screen and get some type of response. So it's looking really good right now. Now let's check to see on the other side, if you tap on the right hand side of the screen with your right thumb, whether that will appear. So I'm going to detect it anywhere within 100 pixels of the far right edge of the screen. The far right edge of the screen is game, or sorry, size zero. So if it's within the size uh, zero minus 100, 100, you know, if you subtract something on the x axis, it's going to be going toward the left, right? So it's 100 pixels to the left of the right edge once we subtract this 100. And if that's the case, you, we're gonna know that you wanna move the skater over to the right-hand side. So we'll just put a print statement first to move right. The initial test here is just to see whether we can detect the taps on the left-hand, right-hand side of the screen. Beautiful, everything's working. We can now adjust the velocity so the velocity, assuming that she's, uh, eventually we'll fix it, but if she's on the ground, then we'll push her off to the right or push off to the left. Because she's on a skateboard, you can't really push off with your foot at least. I guess you could use your body momentum and kind of shift it a little bit um, to kind of pump it, but we're just gonna assume that in order to, for her at this stage, especially because she's on grass, she's gonna to have to be on the ground. And if she's on the ground, then we will take the action of moving her left or, or right. There's no friction from the ground being applied to the skateboard in this video. So once we set it to 200, so if we set the velocity, for example, to minus 200 she's going to move at a constant velocity there's no resistance there's no air resistance there's nothing stopping her so she's just going to zip right across the screen um, right now for every pump it's kind of like an infinite power for a single pedal of the skateboard
To move her, we just need to adjust her position relative to the velocity times dt. Previously, we're adjusting only the y position, but now that we have both of a x and a y movement possibility for Lena, we'll just delete the dot y from both her position and the velocity and multiply it times dt, delta time, so it's 1 60th of a second per interval. Whoa, and she's moving. Fantastic. Because it's in our virtual world that you're creating, you could have her do whatever you want with regards to gravity. There's a super old movie called Back to the Future, which was very popular and had this concept of a hoverboard that uh, could go in the air over different types of surface. So you could make Lena have this type of mobility within your virtual world. Regardless of what you want to do with gravity, you probably do want to have the board drop down, um, even if it can float over the surface. So we're going to add an on collision end here. We're not going to deal with the force of the ground against the force of gravity. So we'll just have a Boolean check to see whether uh, she's on the ground or not. So on collision end, when the collision is over, we're going to set this Boolean variable to false. All we need to do to have her jump off of the platforms and still maintain a horizontal movement is just to set the on collision end when it's when the collision ends we'll just set it to the on ground to false and with this a simple change she'll be able to then drop down once she leaves the platform so it's kind of more similar to a one wheel style where she, you know, she can basically go over any type of surface and uh, take some huge errors. Um, even bigger than something like the, the one wheel, although it's kind of the same concept going through different styles of terrain. Although she's going pretty fast, I think I'm going to adjust the gravity to make her go faster and then perhaps slow down the horizontal movement so that we can see her a bit more. So she's going too far, I think, when she jumps off the platform. She's uh, too much horizontal movement. So I'll set a constant or a final for the push speed, and then we can use that to adjust. I think a, uh, maybe 200 is a bit too fast. So we'll go for 100 and then see how far she jumps when uh, she leaves the platform. So we'll eventually add animation to have her foot hit the ground and push off from the surface. So it's not a, I guess it's not like a one wheel where there's a electric power or something. She, she will have to put her foot on the ground eventually. Right now she can drop down, but she can't jump up and there's no horizontal collision detection. I'm actually gonna cover that one in a future video but I think I will make her jump up right now. Do a, you know, she's going to have to do an ollie because there's no, um, there's no hover uh, force right here. I think I have an animation for a kick, kick flip for Alina too. Maybe I'll add that in the future. But we first need to just make sure that when you tap on the mobile phone screen on the upper portion that you can first detect that you want her to jump. So this kind of jump will be like it's on flat ground. So she's going to have to be on the ground and it's like an ollie. You know, I'm not really sure what to call these movements. I'm calling a push when she puts her foot on the ground and pushes off with one foot on the ground and pushes the skateboard. Right now there's no animation, uh, but we can change the sprite component to a sprite animation component in the future. So when she jumps, I'm first going to adjust her position up slightly. So up is a negative value, right? So I'm going to push her up by 
10 pixels just to make sure just to make sure that she's clear of that grass uh, tile and then once she's clear of the grass tile then i'm going to change the velocity so again if it's a negative velocity she's traveling upwards right on the y-axis here so 200 is going to be relatively fast I, it's 200 pixels times uh the dt right so it's 1 60th and there there she is so but that's a pretty high ollie compared to her relative height i think i want to well, that, I mean, she's really getting up there. I'm going to reduce the um, the jump force and also ch make a check to make sure that she is on the ground so that you can't have her ollie when she's already in the air. Uh, maybe I'll do that in a future, the, the next video, the future video here. You know, with this type of very simplistic physics, here you can have a lot of fun right because you could maybe she gets stronger or she gets some energy um you could probably increase the jump force um, if she's really going for it or maybe increases with experience but let's try to set it to 130 and see how high the jump is if the jump is too high it makes it look completely uh, unrealistic to, is she and also maybe too easy, right? She has to jump over a barrel or a cactus or something in the future. Let's see what it looks like. That's pretty good. She can probably clear uh, like a small cactus shrub. And when she's jumping off the platform, she is moving pretty fast on a horizontal axis, but maybe we'll, we'll live with it. So this tutorial series is, I'm just trying to focus on the velocity, but uh, obviously the, you know, the, the look of the character, how the character is moving, kind of get caught up into the whole story here. So, I'm going to actually change the sprite component so that we can detect whether she's facing a right or a left. And as you recall, if you look at the first video, we do have this animation set from the artist Overcrafted who put it up on open game art. So we could change this so that it has ped, uh, pushing off the animation. We're using a sprite component right now, not a sprite animation component, but I think at the Closer toward the end of the tutorial series, I'll switch it over to a sprite animation component. I'm starting this Boolean variable, whether Lena is facing right um, or not. So it's either true or false. The initial sprite is facing right. So when she, uh, when you push her to the left, if she's facing to the right we're going to flip her and there's a, a built-in method within the sprite component as well as the sprite animation component which is flip horizontally around center so we'll apply this to both the right and the left uh, and then in the next video, we'll take care of the horizontal ground collision. So right now we're only looking for, um, she's only stopping on the Y, velocity Y, when she hits the piece of ground. But we'll change it in the future so that when she hits it, um, when she's going horizontally, because it's on this series of steps, right? So right now she's passing right through it if she... Uh, if she hits something like this right in front of her. But we'll fix that in the future. But right, right now, let's make her, you know, just for fun, make her switch left or right, um, at least the sprite component, when we tap on the screen on the left or right axis. Okay, she's facing right initially. And she can flip and face left, and she still moves. So she 
we can flip her back and forth and in the future, maybe not the next video, but sometime in the future, we'll add the animation. Boom, boom. This is fantastic. Okay, subscribe to the channel and uh, follow along. Hopefully you're having a great time like I am. Have a great day. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.